Thomas Edison, arguably the most important inventor in the history of the world, went to school for just three months. And then he went home, and later he recalled my mother was the making of me. As many as two million American children are following Edison's lead in taking their education at home. Some of their parents object to subjects taught in conventional schools. I hardly trust the government with my tax money. I'm certainly not going to trust them with my children's minds in value and moral type of ways. Others believe that schools stifle the educational process. Professional educators disagree and worry that children schooled at home are missing out. My personal experience as a classroom teacher with homeschooled students who left public education for some reason and then were re-entering, uh, for the most part have been far behind academically. On this edition of Stateline, meet the Oklahoma families who believe that home, in the words of Kathleen Norris, ought to be our clearinghouse, the place from which we go forth lessened and disciplined and ready for life. When the first families moved into the Oklahoma Territory, they educated their children the old-fashioned way. Children in sod homes learned to read by candlelight. If your father was a cobbler, a blacksmith, or a carpenter, it was a pretty good bet that's what you would be too. When boom towns settled into stable communities, the first signs were a new church and a one-room school. The curriculum was pretty basic, reading and writing and arithmetic towns grew, and so did the schools. By the 1950s, public education had become a science. Many people in the educational field were kind of questioning the institutional model, um, the, you know, the Prussian model of, of get them all in there, age segregated, um, you need to see children as, as human resources, kind of like coal or gold or oil or paper products, and they need to be taught a particular set of ideas and values to make them good Americans and you know, people started to question that a lot in the late 60s and 70s. Issues like evolution, school prayer and sex education created a backlash to public education. A few parents found the answer in a page from the past. I like to call it the modern homeschool movement because home-based education has always existed. You know, it's been around for centuries, for millennia. Okay, so it shoots out? Yeah. Does it shoot out every time? Do all no. volcanoes? No? When we started, it was very school setting like, where they sat at the table and uh, we had a, a strict schedule and we did math and then we did English and then we did science and I stood up and I had a marker board and I was very much the teacher. All over like moves up when it gets to the top and explodes. We're going to explode them? Yeah. You can color the vinegar too. It was eight years ago when Paula Neal and her husband pulled their two oldest boys out of private school. For me, it, it's been a process of growth to to get uh, to. I, I'm going to use the word evolve because we evolved out of the school system setting into a life of learning. It was a lot different. I mean, not uh, being in a school setting with a bunch of kids and whatnot, but being home and with my mom teaching me, it was, I felt more comfortable. It felt more like one-on-one -on -one type deal. Um, and I, I like that a lot better. <laughs> it's been a process to learn how my children learn, how I teach and things like that. Good job. Yes. You're doing great. All that looks good. She knows how to teach me better. She knows how, how to make me understand it better. Um, yeah, so she can um, Just find ways for me to understand. Spot. So you're still on the plus side. Does that make sense? Okay. That's quite an evolution to get to the point where uh, we learn by just living. And, and that doesn't mean that we don't do the typical schoolwork, but I'm finding that just in day-to-day -day, uh, conversations with the kids that learning opportunities are there all the time. Today, while Dad is at work, 
Paula teaches her five boys, Tim, Christopher, Marcus, Daniel, and Colby, on their farm near Broken Arrow. I'll start with Timmy. He was uh, fourth grade and, and probably really the instigator behind us beginning to homeschool. He's really involved in ministry, um, in going on missions trips, and he's very focused in that. He's very focused in wanting to go to college and get a four-year degree. My second one is Christopher. <laughs> and um, he's quite the opposite. He does not think within the box at all. If you say A, B, C, he goes X, Y, Z, you know, and that's just, uh, that's where I really first learned to just throw out a concept and see where it goes. Okay. My third child, um, he's the debater. And he is the same scenario. If you say A, B, C, he's going to say, well, why can't it be, you know, B, C, oh, A? Yes. And why oh, isn't it really this nice. way? And why do you choose those letters? Yeah, why isn't it these yeah, letters? Yeah, and Daniel yeah, is the, yeah, the, you know, real rule-oriented. If it's the rule says this and this is what I'm going to do. And, and Colby's the one going, hey, can I get away with this? She knows my strengths, my weaknesses. She knows... Um, how I learned better and whatnot. Like when we first started homeschooling, you know, she really got to learn a lot about how I learn. And she then based her curriculum around me. I don't know how many times they'll ask me something. It's, well, let's go get a book at the library. Let's look that up on the internet. That's our big thing. Let's go look it up on the internet and find out what that's about. The Neals are one of an estimated 20,000 Oklahoma families who homeschool. My best estimate and this is, a, this is an estimate, is that there are about 2.1 to 2.5 million K-12 through homeschool students in the United States at this time. And the number of homeschool families in the U.S. is growing 12% per year. Dr. Brian Ray travels the country researching the homeschool movement and speaking to parents who choose to keep their students at home. And they're saying, why would we want to send our children away to be taught, trained, and indoctrinated in somebody else's ways of thinking, somebody else's values, somebody else's worldview, when we should be doing that. And that's a major reason for homeschooling. Dr. Ray's research indicates the profile of the homeschool family is expanding. Up until five, seven years ago, homeschooling across the country was clearly disproportionately wide angle. But during the last five, seven years, we've seen a sudden and you know, significant increase amongst African-American families, Hispanic families, Asian families. On average, homeschool families are basically median income for families with school-aged children. Homeschooling was disproportionately rural and suburban and distinctively less in the urban areas but that's changing over time too. On average, homeschool parents have a little more formal education than the national average. Uh, the, the typical homeschool dad probably has a college degree and mom has studied at the college level one or two years. Now that's a little higher than the national average. Dollars. These bills feature famous people begin homeschooling for many different reasons. Uh, some of them have just always wanted to. Others kind of get thrown into it because they had a really bad experience at school. Cindy Downs educated her two children in their home in Tulsa and devised an online Oklahoma history curriculum. You talk to 50 homeschoolers, they may have 50 reasons. Um, some homeschool because of social reasons, some for academic reasons, some for religious reasons. I mean, it could be a number of reasons. They're telling us Public schools in many, many places, maybe the majority of places they'll tell us, are not really very safe places. And when they say safe, they mean, of course, physical safety, uh, fights, guns, knives. Who is not safer at home? If I could secure my three boys and just keep them around me daily, I, I, I guarantee it they'd be safe. But at some time, I've got to trust the school system, which I do, to provide an education for my kids, to provide safety for my kids, and to provide a climate suitable for learning. But they're also very uh, quick to tell us it's not just the physical safety. They're concerned about uh, safety from being pressured into getting involved in illegal drugs and alcohol usage by their peers. Uh, they're concerned about safety for their children in terms of getting pressured or peer pressure into premarital sexual behaviors. 
But not all decisions are made for academic, safety, or philosophical reasons. I've had so many calls sometimes where the kid's not coming to school. Mom can't make him. Well, we've got to refer you to the DA. The DA can try to make it, and if they don't want to go that, go that far, well, they'll say, well, I'll just pull my kid out and homeschool. And when they do that, I don't think they're, they're truly setting a homeschool curriculum. I've always tried to sit down and make sure they understand that, hey, nothing against you taking your kid out to homeschool. If that's what you, you, you want to do, that's fine. But on the other end, when you come back, you just can't walk in like that. You're going to have to establish those credits all over again. But again, you're talking in four years as an assistant principal, maybe two or three incidences. It's a common misconception that uh, a vast majority of homeschoolers are right-wing fundamentalist Bible thumpers who hate what's going on in the public schools. Well, there's only an element of truth to that. There, there are strong Bible-believing, what they, they might call themselves conservative, who disagree with a lot of the kinds of things that are going on in public schools. They didn't provide what I needed academically, and they didn't provide what I needed as far as keeping out of my religious business. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, that's just the way it is with a lot of the curriculum, is that it does interfere with our faith and what we're teaching within our faith. It's in everything. I mean, it's in your science curriculum, it's in your history curriculum. It's like everything that you study there's some amount of insertion of how religion doesn't have the answer and that man does. You know, basically I hardly trust the government with my tax money. I'm certainly not going to trust them with my children's minds in value and moral type of ways. If they'd stuck with academics, um, then, I, then it probably wouldn't have been as much of an issue. Um, evolution at that time was not an issue for me. At this time, it it is. Evolution is taught as part of the science and biology curriculum as set by the state of Oklahoma. It's being taught as a theory and I think that's something that we need to point out is that we're not forcing evolution on anybody just like we're not forcing religion on anybody. We're teaching what is laid in front of us and we're teaching it as this is the theory that's out there. I don't expect the public school to teach my child religion because everybody has a different religion and that's fine. But don't teach my kid that our faith is, is null and void, that that was proven wrong and that it's not valid today. If they're in a school setting, it's just being spoon fed to them. This is the information, this is the information and then that becomes knowledge and truth to them. Whereas if you open it up to, here's, here's what everybody's saying, here's all the different points of view, what do you think? Other states have strict regulations on home schools. Some require periodic testing of both students and instructors, a portfolio of writing samples and worksheets, and evidence that all lessons are being taught in English. Oklahoma has no regulations governing home schools. There are no laws, there are no standards. Uh, any parent can choose to claim they are homeschooling their children. There should be no regulation. This should be a freedom that we have to be able to choose the type of schooling that our children have. Um, there should be no, um, no laws need to be put on the books in order to incorporate homeschooling in the system. In a homeschool situation, I know exactly where my kids are and where they need to be, and I personally don't need the government looking over my shoulder at what I'm doing with my children. We don't have to test, and people sometimes go, oh my goodness, no testing. <laughs> But it's not really something that needs to be done because as a parent, you see, is this child learning anything? Is this child reading? You can see whether they're reading or not. Is he learning something about history? You can see that. That's where you think they're headed? What do you think they're going to do when they get there? Maybe we should be giving a third grade reading in math, or a, maybe not every year, but third grade, fifth grade, seventh grade, just to make sure that they are continuing to grow. There need to be standards for, for students. Students need to meet certain academic expectations. They need to be assessed. They need to be monitored. And that's something that we do in the public school. And homeschoolers are 
voluntarily removing their children from uh, that kind of accountability. There are some people that are supposedly homeschooling and they're not but you know what that's a small small percentage of people and we can also say that there's a percentage of teachers who aren't teaching in the high in their public schools but we don't get rid of them or we don't say we'll shut the school down i have given my kids standardized tests um we don't do it every year but about every every other year or so just to make sure just it just helped relieve any anxiety that I might be feeling of whether or not, you know, this is working, whether or not they are, you know, with the same as other peers, you know, they're, they're same age and that kind of thing. How my mom grades me is uh, basically, she doesn't do a lot of tests. It's basically, I'm, I learn it till I get an A. There's no B's or C's. I learn it till I get an A, till I know what it is. Um, it's not like, you know, you take a test, you get so many right, so many wrong. I take the test, the ones that I get wrong, we study harder in, in that area. Because obviously I didn't learn that very well and I, I need to redo it. And these, you can do those? Mm -hmm. I'll check back in with you, but yep, you're doing good. All right. Okay. All right, let's head to the office. Parents feel their bond, their one-on-one -on -one relationship with their child compensates for the parents' lack of formal educational training. People go, but I haven't been taught to teach. Well, you know what? A lot of the people before the 1800s weren't taught to teach either, and they taught their children very well. Our teachers have gone through the educational setting and have received a degree, uh, a degree in education, or they've been uh, certified and they're specialists in their field of study. But what's even more powerful is they have the knowledge and how to present it to kids. Well, four go into 10. Twice. Twice. Five, right? Now, while ago, we were talking about the pizza. Every child who is learning needs to have a teacher who is trained and qualified, who meets high standard and is skilled in teaching the subject areas their students are learning. Uh, and that's something that not every parent is prepared to we do. We're going to multiply the whole thing by two. Tells me I'm adding it. Draw a line, add them together. Three times negative two. That would have to be, that would have to be, should be a mountain. It's called a the teachers mountain. can't uh, connect as much well, because there's like 20 other kids around, so she can't make sure every kid, he or she can't make sure every kid understands it. You know, with the chalkboards, they can write it, but it's not like your mom who knows everything, mostly everything about you. We're never going to know them as good as a parent. Never going to know them as good as a parent. But we're going to try. A typical day is the older ones have their assignments already laid out for them. I do that ahead of time and give them their assignments and they go off on their own. And they come to me when they have questions and that kind of thing. With the younger ones, it's still very much one-on-one -on -one time with them. So we'll take one-on-one -on -one time. Um, history science we can still do as a group setting. Then she gives me all my independent work and I do all my work and uh, most of it independently. Instead of like going to each class for each subject, I have a book for each subject. I have a textbook for each subject. So instead of having a teacher in front of me, I read it and then I do the work. Because you don't have the time to go through the halls or the teacher answering questions. And then there's times where, um, you know, they, they get really interested in doing something. And I sit back and say, you know, what they're doing right now is more important than what I can read to them out of a textbook and that's when you really see them spark. Neil says seeing that spark is something she would have missed if they had gone to public school. It's absolutely amazing. It's just like the the first day when they took that first step and it's that way all over again and it can be a relief sometimes because sometimes you think you know they're never going to get to vision we're just never going to get through this chapter and when it finally comes on you know sometimes it can be a relief as well um, yes I can teach them <laughs> yes they can learn and we can get through this the brothers study together play together have lunch and work around the farm 
It's an experience they all feel has kept them close as a family. They do have, um, I think, a, a bond, a closer bond that perhaps they wouldn't have if they were separated from each other all day. Our family sits down for dinner every night together as a family and, you know, discuss things and um, we enjoy each other. We do things together. On average, homeschool children are 15 to 30 percentile points above public school average in academic achievement on standardized tests. Now, does that mean they're all successful academically? No, it doesn't mean that. You know, it's an average. So, yes, there are some Billies and Susies and Tyrones who are below average in math, and there are some who are far above average. On the American College test, homeschool students average a 23. Public school students average 21. We hear a lot from um, colleges and, and those kinds of classroom settings that they uh, really appreciate the homeschoolers because they're, they are foc more focused and um, have more respect within the classrooms and things like that. 16-year-old Tim Neal is taking classes at Tulsa Tech. His mother says his success is proof that he received a better education at home. He's doing very well. He's got the highest grade point average in his class. Ran into his teacher one day and he shook my hand and said, I wish I had a whole classroom full of Timmies. These kids are, are testing out so much higher. They're, they're more mature in a lot of ways, quicker. And um, most of them come out with careers by the time they're in their early 20s. Most kids today graduate from high school I have no idea what they want to do. The colleges are just falling over their own feet, um, encouraging homeschoolers to come to their college. Uh, uh, Timmy's looking at ORU as his uh, four-year degree, and they even offer a scholarship uh, for homeschooled uh, students. With no requirements, the ones who are reporting are the ones who would be successful. And since there's no monitoring system of those who are homeschooled, uh, you would only hear of those who are being successful. So you're seeing one piece of the puzzle rather than the entire picture. Public schools spend about $8,000 per year per student in Oklahoma. The typical homeschool spends much less. It can be as expensive as you want it to be. You could do it absolutely for free using resources that are on the internet, through the library. Probably my most expensive year was probably 300 and that was probably in the beginning and now um, probably 20 to 50 dollars a year in, in school book materials. One thing you need to consider is that that 8000 per kid is also going into you know, teacher salaries, transportation costs, child nutrition costs, textbooks, uh, keeping computers updated, uh, electric bills, things like that. All that has to be considered. It's an expensive building. They got to heat it, they got to light it. We don't have that. So our costs are basically our materials that we use or our classes that we take. There's absolutely nothing that these kids miss out on. They have Valentine's parties, they have Christmas parties, they have prom, uh, they have graduation ceremonies, they have a whole sports program here in Tulsa. Teams made up of homeschool students play teams from public and private schools in basketball, baseball, and football. And fold the points down. Okay, so now you've got a diamond shape. Stop. At Salvation Army Boys and Girls Club, they have a wonderful homeschool day. First thing they do is either art or home ec. Sometimes we do science. And then the second hour, they have a PE program, which is awesome. They have a full gym and all that. I have a drama class, and the kids come, and um, I take familiar stories and rewrite them so that our faith is incorporated into it. So this time we're doing Wizard of Is. Like what I want to learn about most, what I like most in um, the school subjects, um, which probably it would be music. Um, you could, I have a lot more options for music. I can choose whichever I want. I can choose how, how much I want to do it. One of the advantages of being in public school is the social interaction with different kinds of families, different kinds of students, different kinds of thinking, and, and that is a big picture concept that is important. That's a skill that students need to develop for living in society. 
La Rosa. Whether they teach in a classroom or a living room, all agree that every parent should be asking, what is education? And what do I want my child to get out of it? We started without really any particular goals. That has evolved. And where I stand now is I want my kids to be extremely well-rounded. I want them to know about the world they live in and to understand it, understand the people. I do want them to be educated enough to where they can go to college and be a contributing member to society. It's so important that we have the freedom to choose the education that our kids get, whether it's private school, public school, or home school. We need to maintain the freedom to be able to choose what's best for our families. 1,653 feet. In Oklahoma and other states with little to no regulation, no one can say with any certainty how many virtual truants may lurk in the homeschool ranks. But clearly, when homeschooling works, it works very well. And those parents of exceptional homeschool pupils are understandably wary of government intrusion in their affairs. Their children may in fact outpace public school students in being ready for life. Oh, my gosh. Oh. That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> That's enough. No, people. <laughs> More. 